stand. Let us stand. Let us stand there for it. Let us stand now. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Father, help us tonight, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to come up and pray? Just open up our service tonight. I got Brother Tony here. We'll, we'll get you next time, Raider fan. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, for this blessed day, Lord. I thank you for all things, Lord. I thank you for... Uh, for, for, by, for providing for us here at the Alvarez Center, Lord. I thank you for the Alvarez Center itself, Lord. I thank you for bringing me here and saving my life, Lord. I thank you for uh, Pastor Richard Olagi and his crew for coming here on Friday nights, Lord, and ministering the word to you, to us, Lord, and and teaching us, making us grow in faith, Lord. Uh, I thank you for the Spanish ministry, Lord, for the Christmas tree that they brought in and donated to us and, and, and let us in enjoying it, Lord. I know it's not all about Christmas trees and Christmas lights, Lord, but... It's about your it's about your 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 son Jesus Christ God Almighty, for He's the reason for the season, Lord. In Jesus' name, we say, Amen. 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 Greet each other. I know you guys live with each other, but go around and greet. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Anybody want to come up and give a testimony? Anybody want to share? Come on, testimony. Anybody? Come on. Come on. Been, you know what? I've been waiting for you for about three months, man. <laughs> but that's okay. I <laughs> um, just want to say, number one, thank you very much, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God. Okay. <laughs> Just want to go to the mic. Let's check it. Um, put this up a little bit. There you go. Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you guys. Um, and thank you very much for the Holy Spirit allowing you to be able to minister to all of our souls and being able to lift us up in a time that we much need it and to be able to be built up to be a man of God and be encouraged by the, the elders that are here who, who guide us and give us a nourishment to be able to give to others that are out there. Um, my testimony is just short, you know. Um, God is the living God. He died and rose again to be the God of the living and the dead. And, you know, I look back at my life uh, and my struggle. I remember I was going to go from house to house to plumb. I'm a plumber, licensed contractor. And instead of doing that, I knew I had a problem with 
dealing with people. <laughs> uh, I was always so short and angry and over uh, common trespasses of patience and, and, and tenderness. And I knew that if I had not have prayed in this area and dealing with this one guy who was going to allow me to go from house to house to plumb, I was just going to get myself in uh, much more of a mess of anger and, 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 and fighting and, and uh, not ever see my, my potential of what God wants to do through me be able to manifest or prosper. The pride that I had, I didn't want to do it because I knew I had a problem dealing with people and had a problem with taking orders. And lo and behold, when I prayed uh, after my divorce, I ended up, the Holy Spirit came here, which the ironic thing was I was going to this church on the outside um, in the ministry when we go to uh, picnics and things, arrogantly driving off and preaching the word of God, but not really living by it. But when coming here, um, there was uh, Mondo was the one, one person who said, you know, you got to be humble. I didn't understand what humble meant. Um, and those words were so much uh, um, penetrating my heart. And I thought I was humble, but I literally was in the flesh, humbling as a man is humble, but not humble as the spirit of the Son of God and being a servant. Um, so many altercations that allowed me to see where I, where I was at fault of not accepting myself for who I am and allowing God to really penetrate me uh, by understanding the difference between the flesh and the spirit. Uh, Brother Gilbert and David has been so kind, but I've seen the, the will of God inside of these individuals to really uphold uh, the knowledge that I was missing and to be able to implant it onto my heart to learn how to uh, put it into practice and to be able to um, start the road of recovery in the areas where I was trespassed. And now it's interesting because I see my spirit um, slow to speak, slow to, slow, to, slow to anger, and quick to listen, which is very uncomfortable. It's like putting on a new shoe and it's putting on something so, something that's uh, not comfortable of feeling, but also with the brothers too as well, it allows us to be able to really see the, the spirit manifest in each in every one of us when we're outside of the will of God. So God knits us together to allow his will to be able to, to speak to all of our hearts when we're either out, one, one person encourages us to bring us, bring us back in. Jesse's done that many times. Ron has done that many times. Everybody here does that on a daily day basis and it puts on your heart uh, the understanding that God is a living God and that he comes through his power to be able to manifest those, those, those skills that are much needed to be able to bring someone else into the kingdom of God. I now am having more patience. Um, I'm having much more joy, much more contentment. Um, and he's lined up a lot of different areas of my life uh, that I never would have thought uh, could be possible to get me much more closer to the dream, to be able to serve God through every other individual that's out there and to be able to give him the talents that God has given me, to be able to get them closer to God, but more or less to bring their talents back out too as well. And so, you know, I really commend uh, Gilbert. He's worked with me. Um, and uh, to see the patience and to see the de determination to, to really to live the scripture and to describe to me the, the scripture upon my heart um, has let me know that I see the eyes of God and the heart of God beating through him um, saying, son, I love you. Even though it's coming through a different individual where sometimes I just don't want to talk to him <laughs> or don't want to be around him. But then I really, I'm looking and seeing the compassion of how much that he does love me. And, and you know, I'm uh, renewed. In, in an area, and and it and and I and I'm, I'm blessed to be able to see how God is working through every individual here when we do fall, and how the grace of God lifts us back up, and to be a, a, a servant and a man of God. You know, uh, I love that scripture, and I'll just keep it quick. quick. It says, um, <clears throat> "Anyone in glorious, let him let him glory in this that I execute love and kindness, judgment and righteousness upon the earth." And so, the more that I'm in the Spirit and stay out of the flesh the more God can be able to execute his love upon someone who's outside of the will. And that's what I'm practicing today. I'm able to do that. When I go to ministry, a lot of people just come and they start asking, how can I get right with God? How can I be able to um, have a relationship? We end up praying and lo and behold, they go off. God's set, uh, planted a seed and it's allowed them to be able to have an opportunity to go on in life. So I thank God for that. And I thank you very much for the time and patience you guys have given me. Thank you. In your name, amen. God is good. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother, for sharing that.
Do I need to lower this? Thing? All right, well, is everybody born again? Amen. Everybody accepted Jesus Christ? Amen. If you were to die today, you know that you would go home to be with the Lord. Amen. All right, all right. We got to take care of business first. Uh, if not, then all it is is a, is a seminar. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, as we continue transformation... Let me ask you something. When you sin, what do you mean when you sin? Yeah, when we sin, even though we're born again, we do sin at times. Do you agree with me? We're talking about transformation. I'm not here to get people to start feeling condemned or anything, but when you sin, how do you feel? How do you feel? Do you feel, do you feel like you've broken God's heart? I know I do. When I have a have a uh, uh, not so good thought about somebody, or or or, or maybe I, I want to get even with somebody, or or uh, whatever it might be, uh, uh, how how do I feel when 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 I start acting like that? Because it, it's a thin line between loving God and hating your neighbor. <laughs> Could be tough tonight, huh, guy? That's okay. But how do you feel? And this is part of transformation because once when we were dead in our sins, when we were dead in our sins, we felt nothing. If it felt good, we did it. Boy, you guys are not... Okay? If, we fe if it felt good, we did it. Yeah. Come on, it hasn't been that long ago. But if it felt good, we did it, and we didn't think about it. When you burn the connection, when, 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 when you took your, your, your mom's prescriptions to trade them for your own, when you, <laughs> right? When, 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 you were, when you were cheating on your wife, or maybe beating on your wife, but now as you're a man of God, say man of God, man. now that we're men of God, we have to have some type of sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, if we're really born again, we're, it, it, it'll, it, it'll cause us to think yeah. once, twice, uh, maybe all night long. David said, I, I wet my, my pillow with tears all night long because I break your heart and, 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 and I've done wrong in your sight and I, I've sinned against you, only you, O oh Lord. And we're talking about transformation and transformation is a lifelong process. I was just sharing with a brother, when, even when, when you leave this program, life is a class, is a classroom. It's a learning process. Whatever we do, whatever we learn now, so uh, may I encourage you to, to, to get all you can here to learn about the things of God, to learn how to, to, to stand in, in adversity, to learn how to uh, uh, stomp on the devil and to, to cast down uh, imaginations that will cause you to, to think ungodly or even walk away from the Lord. Get all you can in this training program. Yeah. Amen? Get all you can because when you go out there to, to go out there and raise your family or you go out there to a job right now or you go out there to start a ministry, start a business, uh, if you go out there to just do the, uh, life the right way, the God kind of way, things are going to happen. I said things are going to happen. Things happen when we're in the program here, but you know what? When we're in the program, we're under the, the tent. We're under the Shekinah glory. We're, we have a protection. That's why some of you don't want to go out and work right now because you know that this is your safe place. Or was that just me in 95? I, I, they said, don't you want to go work? I said, no, I'm fine here. I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do here, but uh, I'm not ready to go out there. And when I thought I was ready... I was eight months as a graduate in the program. I went out there and, and I, I started to realize, you know what? The, the world ain't going to celebrate you yeah. because you're, you're, you're kingdom business. 
if you begin to proclaim and, and pray for your food and, 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 and witness, and that you're always going to have a devil to come after you. I said you're always going to have a devil to come after you. That's why a transformation process is, is daily. A, a transformation process is hourly. It, it, it's minute by minute. A transformation process has to continue to move and cycle just like your blood flows. Amen? We, we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. If you plan on if you plan on preaching, if you if you even accept the challenge of even coming up here and praying before we open up a service like this, the enemy is going to start to mess with your mind. The enemy is going to tell you you don't know how to pray. The enemy is going to tell you you know what you don't even know how to spell. How can how can you pray? The the enemy will tell you 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 barely know how to read. You haven't even said your prayers this morning. I'm just giving you a little bit of, of insight on what the enemy wants to do. He wants to shut men's mouth. And what he wants to do is open men's mouths to say ungodly things. Being transformed by the renewing of our mind. Amen. If you think that once you get out of this program that, that, that it's going to be easy, that you're going to be able to start a church, uh, start a ministry, maybe, maybe start a, a program like this or run a program like this, you will have resistance. And, and let me ask you this, are you going to be equipped, prepared, ready, and, and, and buttoned down with the, the word of God and, and your weapons of warfare to be able to withstand the enemy? Because the older that we get into the Lord, the deeper we get with God. Yeah. The, I said the deeper we get with God because you might be going up a level in ministry right now. They might be letting you drive the van right now. That does not mean the devil's going to let you drive wherever you want. He's going to try to get you to veer off in the cul-de-sac. At the dead end. He's going to try to get you to veer off in the alley. And in the name of Jesus, I bind and I rebuke you devil. When you're trying to get me to go down the one ways when I'm supposed to only go down one way. And, and, and why I'm saying this is because there is an attack on men. There is an attack on men. There's an attack on you when you're getting ready to come in here. The enemy has already started to fill your head, fill my head with junk. Say junk. junk. We got to get rid of that junk in order for us to move the kingdom forward. I said we're going to move the kingdom forward. And we might take two steps back, but we've got to move the kingdom forward. And it's got to be one of us to move it forward, if not all of us. Amen. So, so what hinders... Many men of God. If this is so easy, why do many men of God remain in their seats? Why do many men of God remain in the chair, in the pew, in the back row? Why, why is it that us men, we can't get involved? Why is it that we will not accept the challenge and the call that God has called us to? Think about that. Some of you have desires to be something in the church. Serve. God's already spoken to you. He's already equipped you. He's already, he's already handed you the call. And you want to answer the call, but what is it that is holding you back from answering the call? What, what, what is it that, that, that got your mouth tied up right now? To say, pick me. I'll go. I'll do it. I'll serve. I'll usher. I'll, 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 I'll greet. I'll pray for people. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go evangelize. I'll go knocking door to door. What is, what is it that's holding us back right now? What is, what is it that makes us feel so inadequate, so insecure, so, so, so uh, unable to answer the call of God. Because if you're born again, if we're born again, if I'm born again, that means God has equipped me to do whatever he's called me to do. 
Uh, you guys aren't getting it, man. God has equipped us to do whatever he's called us to do. And to do it well. And to excel in the things of God. And to, and, and to move forward. Amen. I'm talking about transformation because you know what? It's not always going to be good when you leave the house and you kiss your wife goodbye. They're not, they, they love us, but they don't always agree with where we're going. Okay. You're not always going to have the kids saying, acting right when you're getting ready to go do ministry. Man, this is tough, man. I should have had you stay up here, brother. It's not always going to be... The, the perfect place behind the pulpit. Right. Yeah. And, and you don't have to be behind this pulpit, but whatever your pulpit is. Maybe it's candy ministry. Yeah. Candy ministry is actually a pulpit. Yeah. It, it, it preaches the good news of Jesus Christ. We're okay with this. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Wherever we do missions is a pulpit. Yeah. The good news of Jesus Christ is preached by what we do. Sometimes if you don't feel like saying anything nice, I might as well just shut my mouth. Okay. James 1.19 says, slow to anger, slow to speak, quick to listen. You can't hear God when you're running your mouth. I can't hear God if I'm running my mouth. Amen? So if it's so easy for us men to remain ca caterpillars, why is it so easy for us men to remain sitting in those chairs? Why is it so easy for us men to remain sitting in the Lazy Boy ministry at home while we send our families to church? While we send our, our wives to, you go to church and, and I'll stay here and, and uh, I'll humble myself and I'll make breakfast that way you can come back. And have something to eat. Why is it so hard? Were we, are we not regenerated of the, by the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Now what is it to be regenerated? To be empowered with, with living, living power. Holy Ghost power. Boom power. Dunamis power. Do you realize that dunamis power will get you to do something? You, do you realize that God's dunamis power is only from the throne of God, that it will empower you to do things that you know that you cannot do in the natural? Amen. Amen. In the natural, we cannot do this. But in the supernatural, <laughs> in the supernatural, the boom power, it's the boom power that gets you, gives you confidence. Well, Godfidence. And Godfidence is a lot better than confidence because Godfidence will get you to step into a, into a, a realm where, where only the Spirit of God reigns. How many want to reign with God? Well, you got to have Godfidence. And see, you got to understand, when the enemy starts bombing your, uh, bombing your spirit, bo bombing your mind, and, and telling you, you can't do that. You haven't been to college. You didn't even finish high school. You can't do that. You, you don't know how to read you. You can't do that. You've never held a job in your life. You, you can't have a paycheck. You, you can't rent a, a house. You can't buy a house. You can't be out on your own. And a lot of us men, we end up restrained by, by the spirit of hell because of our mind not being transformed. Amen? Because we can be transformed in a setting like this, but what if we're not together? Some of you men are working right now, and, and you're not working in Holy Ghost companies. And you know you're battling and you're struggling. But by the grace and the mercy of God, God allows you there because he has his hand upon you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Don't we have promises from God? Yes. Yes. Do you not want to see the promises of God? Do I not want to see the promises of God? You know why I don't quit? Because I want to see the promises of God. 
I don't care what I'm going through. I might not like what I'm going through right now. I might not really care for the, the weather, spiritually speaking, emotionally speaking, physically speaking. I might not like what's going on, but I'm not going to quit because I want to see the promises of God. There's too many people relying on us men. On us men. Amen. Too, too, too many people relying on us. See, you're getting exposed to... You're, you're getting exposed to social media. Amen. Brother, you, you weren't just right here. You, you just went like in the airwaves. Who knows where it's going? We're reaching nations right now. We're, 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 using, we're using social media as a, as a tool. And, 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 and we, uh, Boom Squad wants to get to know you guys a little better. Oh, come on. I said Boom Squad wants to get to know, know men that are being raised up in the things of God. Amen. Amen. And if I, if, I, if, if, if I could just ease your mind just a little bit while your mind is being renewed. Anybody in the Boom Squad is not perfect. Okay. We're just like you men. I said we're just like you men. We put on our pants the same way and we trip on our tongue just the same way you do. And, and if God can use us, and I'm not saying it's okay to trip on our tongue, but we do fail. But if we're not failing, that means we're not doing anything. Are you going to do th something for the things of God? Are, are you going to pursue what God has for you? Are you gonna Are you gonna answer the call? Are you Are you gonna cast down demons? Are you gonna cast down negativity? Are you gonna Are you gonna stop on the devil's neck? Because right now I'm telling you right now the Spirit of God wants to do something in each and every one of our lives. Amen, Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost now, and when I came in, I was battling. I, I battle. I, I'm telling you right now, I'd be a liar if I said everything's perfect when I walk in here. I'd be a liar. And each one of these men that come with us would be a liar too if they would tell you that, oh, it's perfect. Life is not perfect, but God is. And if we got God in our lives, we can get through whatever's coming at us. If we have God in our life, we can go through whatever trial, tribulation, uh, struggle, disappointment, discouragement, valley, mountaintop, whatever it is. Or when the waters come, we will not drown. When the fire comes, we will not smell like smoke. And I'll tell you one thing, if you are in the fire, get fired up. Because this, a lot of times God will put us in the fire so we'll get consumed by the fire of God. Amen? Amen? Is this okay? So the problem is likely a failure to renewing our mind if we're not advancing. How many battle with insecurity? Let me define insecurity. How many feel that you're just not good enough? That, 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 that you'll never amount to anything. And it's okay, man. Raise your hands if, if I'm throwing out questions. Uh, how about you out there? What about you? God can see that hand. God sees our hands when we know that we're intimidated by the th things of God because of the enemy telling us we can't do this. Moses stuttered. I said Moses stuttered. God, God picks the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And why I ask us, uh, uh, why do we, uh, do we feel intimidated? Do we feel inadequate? Or do we feel that we can, we'll never amount to anything? It's because the enemy is too busy saturating our minds with those kind of thoughts. Yes. Yes. Romans chapter 12. Our foundational scripture, it's been for the year, hasn't it? Yes. The whole year. We've been on being transformed here the whole year. And, 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 and whenever God finishes up the series, it's not finished in our life. It's not finished in our life. Everybody, everybody there. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Anybody like to stand up and read that out loud? 
Let me have this brother back here, okay? I'll give you I'll get you next, okay? Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. So let me reinforce this. Now, Paul is saying, I urge you, therefore, Alvarez Center. I, I urge you, therefore, social media. I urge you, therefore, he's talking to church people. He's talking to disciples. He's talking to lovers of God. He's talking to, to, to men of God. He's talking to those that are following God, that are disciples of Christ, okay? He says, I urge you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God. He, he, what he's doing, he's I'm pleading with you. Please, by the, by, by at the least that we can do, okay? That you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Holy and acceptable to to God, not holy and acceptable to baby's mama, not holy and acceptable to the parole officer, even though you have to follow the, their rules, even though you have to abide by the law, holy and acceptable to God, amen? When you, let me tell you something, when you please God, you'll find favor with your enemies, amen? All right, so it says, which is your reasonable service of worship? Do not be conformed. What does it mean to be conformed? Stop thinking how you used to think. Stop doing what you used to do. Stop acting like you used to act. Oh, I'm getting hit right there. Uh, stop acting like you used to act. Stop doing. Do not be conformed. Don't reconvert back to worldly ways. All right, because now that we're born again, we're new converts. Now that we're born again, we're all th old things passed away. The, everything becomes new, a new creation. We're a new creation. Well, I don't feel like a new creation. Well, you don't have to feel like a new creation. Just walk by faith and you'll become a new creation. Amen. All right, so it says, do not be conformed to this world. Do not be who you used to be. Do not be who they are out there. Amen. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Be, say transformed. Transform. Be transformed. Be changed. Be changed. Be rearranged. Be moved out of yourself and into kingdom stuff. Amen. Be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Amen. How am I going to renew my mind? Does watching uh, uh, junk movies on, uh, 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 on TV or, or uh, on the DVD, does that renew your mind? No, all it does is, is take you back to the old way. All it does is conform you back to, wow, I keep seeing people put on social media, oh, the good old days. If those days were so good, why are we being renewed by the re trust? Form, renewed by our, it was uh, it, for a season is the uh, sin is good for a season the good old days but I don't need those good old days anymore I don't need those good old days and to be honest with you when I'm going through hell or high water and, and not everybody's liking on me or or even loving on me I'm not thinking about man only if I could go go back to the good old days what I need is is some new days what I need is a, a, a fresh step what I need is some new living water that's what I need I don't need to go back to the good old days because those days are old and old things pass away the neighborhood passes away Sancha passes away. What's her name passes away. Credit card fraud passes away. Prison doors pass away. All that old stuff passes away. My, 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 the little black book has passed away. It's nothing but the good book now, I said. I said it's nothing but the good book. The little black book ain't go, gonna help you, but the good book is gonna help you a long way. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, not your brother's mind, not your wife's mind, 
Not your fiance's mind. Your mind. Amen. Work on your mind. The Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Stop worrying about Brother Tony over here. Worry about Brother Rudy and Brother Gilbert. Brother Juan. Don't, 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 don't worry about me. Work on your own salvation. I got my own salvation I got to work on. If I'm, worried, if, I, if I'm worried about my brother over here, I must have a big old log in my eye. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just preaching myself happy right now because I need the joy of the Lord to give me strength. I said I need the joy of the Lord to give me strength. <laughs> Amen. All right. So by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let's read on. It says, uh, for I say, though, through the grace given to me to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sound judgment. According to the measure of, of faith, God has distributed to every man. For just as we have many parts of one body, here we go. Just as, for just as we have many parts in one body, and not all parts have the same function. If you're part of the body of Christ, we're, we're one body. Say one body. one body. This is where the church is going to need us. I said, this is where the church is going to need us. Is it, Jesus said, you know what? I'm the head. You be my hands. You be my feet. You be my spokesperson. You be my servant. You be not my disciple. Amen? Amen. Okay. I'm trying to get us out of that chair. Amen. Is this okay? I, and you know what? When, when, when I begin to preach like this, it's not because I'm all that. But the Spirit of God needs to help me to help you. And when the Spirit of God helps you, then you can help me. Uh, come on. See, we're part of one body. We're part of one body. Amen? All right? So for, let's go back to verse 4. It says, For just as we have many parts in one body, and not all parts have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ. Say Christ. Christ. Okay. And all. And all are parts of one another. So get used to it. We are all parts of one another. Yeah. We got to get used to it. When, you're, when your heel hurts in the morning when you get up, do you cut your toe off? Do you cut your feet off? Do you cut your feet off if your heel hurts? What do you do? Okay, meds, meds wasn't really the right answer, but that's okay. What I do when a, <laughs> what I do when, when a part of my body is hurting, I tend to, after I prayed, I tend to favor it a little bit more and not put as much weight on it. Amen? Some of, some of us with aches and and pains that we battle through, we, we, we know how to adjust. Oh, God. I said, we know how to adjust. Right? Is this okay? We know how to adjust. So maybe my, my right knee is hurting me, so it's causing my whole right side to hurt. So I have to kind of move a little differently so I don't hurt myself more. Now, I, I'm telling you right now, as us being all different members of the body of Christ, we must take care of each other. I said we must take care of each other. I said we must take care of each other. What I really, what I really enjoyed tonight when, when, when we started was somebody in the back began to praise God. It hadn't come up yet, but somebody initiated it. I said somebody initiated it. Our Tuesday night group has been trained that if I'm not there at 7.05, what do we do? We start. God forbid if, 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 if the Lord were to take me home on the way over here and, and Boom Squad was delayed somewhere, what would you do? You'd start. Somebody would step up. Somebody would step in. 
I said somebody would step up and somebody would step in. Amen. I'm telling you, man, somebody's going to, when you were out in the world, you would step in or you would run. Right? Were you one to step in or did you run? Because if you ran then, you'll step in now. And if you step, if you step in then, you'll step up now. Let me say that again. If you ran then in the neighborhood, you'll step in now. And if you stepped in before, you'll step up. Amen. That's good. Amen. See, God is raising leaders. Yeah, that's good. I said God is raising leaders. And God wants men to be leaders, Rudy. You are a leader. God has instilled in your life to be a leader for his kingdom. Well, what do you mean? You've got to lead yourself out of bed and hit your knees. You've got to lead, after you've hit, hit, hit your knee, you've got to lead yourself to this, to read. And to get filled. And, and, and then what? Well, when I go home, uh, I, I, I have to lead to, for my children and teach them how to pray. Uh, pray for their food. Pray, bless them in the name of Jesus. See, all men have been called to be leaders. But it's our decision. Are we going to be godly leaders? Or are we going to be conformed leaders? Because if we're being transformed by the renewing of our mind in Christ Jesus, we're going to be godly leaders. Amen? Amen? I said, we're going to be godly leaders. You're going to be out there experiencing stuff. People are going to uh, need prayer, and God is going to quicken you. Are you going to lead? You don't have to find out their name. As a matter of fact, quit getting names and phone numbers out there. Just pray for them. Just pray for them. Just pray for them. If you're, if you're out there doing candy ministry and, and somebody says, pray for me, you don't have to get a personal prayer line. Help me, Father. Just pray for them. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to ask them what they need prayer for. Just pray for them. You don't need their name. God knows their name. God knows their name. God knows their need. And God knows when to deliver for them. Amen. We don't need the 411 here, God. I got this for you, but I'm going to keep this for myself. Amen. I'm talking about being leaders. I'm talking about being leaders, being transformed. And maybe we're struggling with the transformation process. At one time, we didn't, we didn't have a struggle with transformation because we just were conformed. Amen. So let's read on. Verse 5. Verse 5. So we... Being many are one body in Christ, and all are parts of one another. we got to get this really in our spirit. We're all parts of one another. Jesus is coming back for his bride. Not for divisions. I said not for division. He's not going to care about the Baptists, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, Church of God. Four square. He 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 coming back for his body. Yeah. Amen. I say he's coming back for his body. Amen. Are we okay with it? So we gotta learn to work with it, one another. God help me. He's just I'm just he's just getting whacked right now. <laughs> we have to work with one another. I think I just preached that for myself. <laughs> now verse six. We have diverse gifts according to the grace that is given to us. If prophecy according to the proportion of faith. If service in serving. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. Building up. Okay. He who gives. Gives with generosity. He who rules with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. See we all have different kind of gifts. Amen. The Spirit of God is in us where you might be having compassion on somebody uh, because of, uh, of a situation they're going through. God has given you that gift of compassion to comfort. Not just a sister. Uh -oh. 
not just a sister. Brothers. If, if God has given you a gift of encouragement, it's to encourage the body of Christ. Amen? Well, I'm talking about getting us out of the chairs. Getting us to... And, and please do this in, 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 in godly order. And please, please check with your, your leaders in the church. Check with your pastors. If you can start... Don't start operating in the me, myself, and I ministry. Amen? There's time to grow in, 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 the, in the center where, where we grow and they, they begin to see fruit that is, is uh, being, being produced by our lives. So then they, they, they will initiate. Amen? Or maybe you need to talk to the leaders. Hey, I, I, I have a burden to, to help usher. That's one of the most scarcest ministries in the body of Christ. Everybody wants to be up here. But nobody wants to be back there. Or they want to be back there, but they don't want to be in the toilet ministry. Right? Right? Well, I, I, I know when we were in the home, and probably now, our first ministry was a toilet ministry. Amen? We were raised to clean that. And if you can clean... A toilet. I'm sure you can preach a sermon. In time. In time. As a matter of fact, while you're cleaning that toilet, you're preaching a sermon. That's right. You're, you're preaching it. You're, and, those, and those of us that have never cleaned a toilet, we learn how to pray. Because we don't want to do that, but God is working in our life. Amen? So learn. Learn. Let God move you out of your comfort zone, out of the front row, the middle row, the last row, when it comes to service. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. Is Jesus in us? Then we got to serve. Amen? We got to serve. Maybe it's just not driving, Martin. Maybe you got to check the oil too. Maybe you got to pop the hood. Maybe you got to maybe you got to stop and put some air in the tires. It's not all about that. It's not all about driving ministry. Amen. You want to get you want you you want to get God's people to their destination safely. Amen. I don't know why I went there. Anyway. So can a mind be renewed on, on a starvation diet? Well, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. I'm fasting from the Word. I'm fasting from prayer. I'm fasting from fellowship. Do, do, do you realize that fellowship is very, is very vital to our growth in the Lord? That's, that's where not only iron sharpens iron, but... It, it, it brings out the best. Right. Uh, you're asking God to teach you how to love, and, and, and God brings you an un unlovable person. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what? You just stepped into class. Bringing up somebody unlovable to, to learn how to love. Right? Maybe you need patience. So you're asking God, I need more patience. Bring you somebody that runs on your patience. Guess what? You're in class again. We're in class again. Amen. To bear the fruit of patience. Amen. Can a mind be renewed on junky TV programs? Or those magazines? Not just those magazines, but what's that? What's that? Uh, men? Were they... GQ and men, there you go. I knew somebody. I mean, God says to take care of our body, but not to be extreme about it. Amen. If you want to learn how to take care of your body, this, this is the best manual. A lot of them, Atkins diets and all that, they got that out of the Bible. They just changed the name. Right? 
You guys, you guys do the Daniel fast, right? Daniel. Book of Daniel. That's where they got the Daniel fast from. Amen? Don't feed yourself junk food. Don't feed yourself junk food in the spirit, Tony. Amen? We become what we think. I said we become what we think. Amen? What are you thinking about yourself? What do you think about yourself when you, get, when you go to your rack at night? What are you thinking? Are you thinking that... Go to 1 Peter 2.9. 1 Peter 2.9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. This is what we should be thinking when we, we lay, lay down for rest. Amen? Not thinking that we're losers or we'll never amount to anything or, or I'm a deadbeat dad. Or God will God, repair the fatherhood. I said, God will repair the fatherhood. You let him repair you, he'll repair your fatherhood. What do I mean? You'll become a better dad when you become a godly dad. You'll become a better dad when you start thinking like a godly dad. Now, do godly dads make mistakes? Of course. But godly dads get up and let God fix the mistakes. Amen? 1 Peter 2.9 When you lay down at night, think like this. But I am a chosen race. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm a man of God's own possession. So that I may declare the goodness of him who, him who has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now in time... Verse 10, in times past, the old. In times past, the old. The way we used to think. The way we used to think. Conformed. But transformation is 1 Peter 2, 9. Now verse 10, it says, in times past, I was not a people. But now, I am a people of God. I'm a man of God. Say, I'm a man of God. I'm a man of God and say it like like you mean it. Say it. Say it. Say 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 it with the uh in, Oh, cojone. There you go. Yeah. Say it like this. Like this? Sack up. I am a man of God. That's right. Sack up. Okay? Okay? But now I am a man of God. I had not received mercy, but now I have received mercy. And now that I have received mercy, I can speak with intestinal fortitude that I am a man of God. There you go. I'm trying to process that. Process. It takes a pro see, and that's a transformation. That's transformation is the process is to intestinal fortify man up okay so read it again first Peter 2 9 but I am a chosen race I like being chosen I said I like being chosen because when everybody else wrote me off God decided to choose me a fool somebody that was nobody and I was a became a nobody out of my own choice but God chose me Amen. So I am a chosen race. I like to say I'm a king's kid. I'm daddy's boy. And well, why do you say that? Because I am daddy's boy. And if you don't like it, take it up with my daddy. And he'll tell you too. There's room for you too. Amen. So I am a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. Before I was unholy, 
I was, I, I was a sinner. I was sick. I, 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 I was no good. I, I was no good for anybody. I, I, I couldn't be trusted. I, I, I wasn't allowed here. I wasn't allowed there because of my choices. But now I'm a holy man of God. I'm not all that, but God is all that in me. I said, and I'm not saying this arrogantly, but sometimes we just got to say it. I'm a holy man. Why am I holy? Because Christ lives in me. Is Christ holy? Is Christ holy? Is Christ in you? Then it makes you a holy man. He makes you a holy man. Amen? A man for God's own possession. I'm not just a cheap date no more with the devil. I, I, I don't flirt and, and, and drop my skirt to the devil anymore because I, I, I'm of God's own possession. And God is jealous of us. I say God is jealous of us. God will not share us with anybody. I say God will not share us with evil. God will not share us with the devil. That's why in, in Corinthians he says, you know what, if you want to keep playing with the devil, I'm going to let you go. So you can get tired and come back. I'll let you go. I love you so much. I, I can't. We're not going to date. God does not want to date us. It's not a 1-900 with God. It's all the way. It's a toll-free number with God. It's a toll-free number for life with God. Amen? So that I may declare the goodness of him who has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Do you realize that God has called us out of darkness into light so that we can be protected? When you go out there in public, people know you already, right? Go ahead, agree with me. They know you. Why? Because God has his marvelous light on you. So when you try to do evil deeds in the back of the laundromat, Or, be, or behind the 99 cent store. Or even all the way down there in Lakewood. God's got his light shining on you. I guarantee you, you th I guarantee you, you think that you can't be found by somebody? God always sends somebody. Right before we get into something. To realign us back with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Remember, God, God does not just stay here with us, men. He's here with us, but when you leave, he goes. David said, I, I, I make my bed in the grave, you're there. I go out over here to Rite Aid, you're there. I'm over here at the habit. You're there. The habit, the burger stand. The habit. You're there. Over at, at where you said, you told the director you were going to be over here. He's there. Amen. He's called us into his marvelous light. So that he can protect us. He will expose us in private. But he will protect us publicly. Amen. This is good. Amen. He will expose us in private. When David fell with the sheep, Bathsheba, Nathan called him to the side and said, Hey, let's go to the director's office. <laughs> okay? But in public, his marvelous light protected. We have to stay out of dark deeds. Men love to do things in the dark. We're not cockroaches, man. We're king's kids. Amen? Now, verse 10. I'm going to finish with this. In times past. Remember, that was conformed. Anybody learning anything tonight? Is this okay, Tony? Tony, we're good? Yeah. All right. In times past, I was not a people. But now, 
I am a man of God. I said, I am a man of God. When the enemy starts knocking on your brain, on your mind, and saying you'll never amount to it, no, I'm a man of God. No, I'm a king and priest. I have authority. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender and not the borrower. I'm not a junkie. I'm a king's kid. I said, I'm not a junkie. I'm a king's kid. I, 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 I don't prostitute myself anymore. I'm a king's kid. I sit at the king's table. I said, I sit at, sit at the king's table. Amen. And that's what you got to do by the renewing of your mind. Well, do you really have to say that? Yes, I do. I have to. I have to for myself. I have to tell myself before I come here. I have to tell myself before I get to work. I have to tell myself before I get home. I have to tell myself before I, I, I go to church. I, I have to tell myself wherever I go at times because I battle and the enemy is always telling me you, you still have the same stinking attitude. You still have the same stinking attitude. But uh, my transformation is a lifetime process. I said, my transformation is a lifetime process. You haven't changed. That's the devil saying, you haven't changed. Yes, I have changed. I haven't changed maybe completely. I haven't changed completely. But I am in the changing process. I said, I am in the changing process. And that's what you need to speak to yourselves, men. And when the home becomes oppressed because I know the home will will get attacked at times and when the home becomes oppressed there, there takes one man to to lift up lift up the name of Jesus and lift up the souls of the brothers see we just read we just read that that we're one body not sitting there laughing ha 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 oh Rudy's hanging in there ha 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 because <laughs> that's what we do. We do. And if I'm laughing at my brother because he's going through hard times, shame on me. Because God said, be careful because you know what? It's coming for you too. It's coming for you too. You're not exempt. You're not all that. And if you are all that, why aren't you lifting him up? And if you are all that, why, why, why aren't you encouraging him? And if I am all that, why, why aren't I encouraging you out there? Amen. Somebody has to be an encourager. Somebody's got to encourage me. Who's going to encourage me? Well, you don't need encouragement. <laughs> well, you think? <laughs> That's my wife. She'll tell you that guy needs encouragement. He needs a whole lot of change, too. Amen. We okay with this? Amen. We're, we're okay? We're a process, man. We're in process. We're on the potter's wheel. I say we're on the potter's wheel. And sometimes the wheel goes fast, but God knows how fast he can put us. He knows. He wants to make us. He wants to mold us. He wants to shape us. He, want, he wants to rearrange us. But first he's got to break us. And how he will break us is that stinking thinking that we have. That, that, that insecure spirit. Oh, nobody loves me. Ooh, woe is me. Nobody loves me. If nobody loved you on this earth, God still loves you. <laughs> we didn't like that either, huh? If nobody else loves me for the rest of the night, God still loves me. And you know the good thing about it? Is even with a, a stinking attitude, God still loves us. When we have that bad attitude, I'm not encouraging us to have bad attitude. But God still loves us. He loves us. Even when he blesses us, I don't like that. I don't like what you gave me, God. He still loves us. Nothing can separate him from loving us. Whatever we do, and I'm not saying go out and do it, please don't. Whatever we do, God will never stop loving us. He will never, never stop loving us. And if we walk a perfect line the rest of the night, you can't get him to love us anymore. He has given all his love that he has for us each and every day that we have a chance. 
I said, each and every day that we wake up, God's love is still there. Ephesians talks about He lavishes, lavishes His love on us. What does lavish mean? He just, just, just you know how you, you know how you're still smothering your ex and she don't want you. That's, God lavishes us more than that. You know, as you say, please, 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 I'll, I'll change, I'll change, I'll change. <laughs> you better get me out of here, man. God loves us so much, he just, he just like floods us with his love. Amen? Amen. That's the word of the Lord tonight. I don't think we're ever going to finish this. Amen? Come on up. We'll have Pastor John come up and pray. Come on, gentlemen, come on, let's give God some praise tonight. Thank come you, on. Lord. Thank come you, Lord. on, you can be a lot louder than that tonight. Come on, let's stand in this place tonight. Let's stand in this place here tonight. Amen. Come on, let's lift our hands tonight. Gentlemen, did we receive from God tonight? Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord. We thank you, God, that uh we're in the metamorphosis process, Father. That is the word for transformation, Father. We thank you that, Father, our mind is changing, Father. Our mind is changing, Father. We thank you, Father, tonight, God, that you met us exactly where we're at, Father, at the Daniel Alvarez Center, Father. And we thank you, Lord, Father. Thank you, God, that, Father, uh, your power, Father, lives inside us, Father. So, Father, change is here and change is now, Father. We thank you, Father, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, give God a shout.